Hey guys, we're back and it's a Tuesday night. I have changed up for two nights a week because I have so many wonderful women that have amazing stories to tell. So if you haven't um, filled out the form, the Google form that's in the description in the event, please um, fill it out if you want to come on and share your story or your talent or whatever God has put on your heart. I would love to have a conversation with you. And welcome everyone to, to tonight to Heart to Heart Hub with Convo. I have Mindy Oten in the house. Hi. <laughs> Yay. And Mindy lives in Cochrane, um, where I live. So we've met years ago, mm -hmm. uh, but we haven't seen each other for a while uh, because of, you know, the situation you know not allowed to go out to these places but here we are online connecting we had a chat beforehand it was nice we got to meet so mindy yeah. is a is a, a wife i don't know how many years of corey and or corey is husband. i think 16 yeah 60 wow and three young boys and mm -hmm. she is an amazing artist i actually got to see her first paintings and watched her progress incredibly over the years. And I'm just in awe of what God has, has gifted her. And so we'll get to that in a little bit, but I wanted to like do a little bit of get to know you. So welcome, Mindy. Thank you. Um, one of my first questions is where did you grow up? I grew up. Oh, good one. No, I was, I was born in uh, Camrose, Alberta. I've never met anybody born in Camrose. Wow. Camrose yeah. Uh, that's where my dad grew up and lived and um, uh, born in Camrose. And then really early on, we moved to Montana and uh, I don't really remember. I was so young. And then from Montana, we moved to North Dakota wow. and where my mom's from. And so I grew up, I would say I grew up as, as a younger child through middle school in North Dakota. And um was there my grandparents have a farm there and uh cousins and everyone there and then we my my parents moved back up here to calgary when i was in gray i think i was about 11 years old and so i lived here and lived in redwood meadows just oh, yeah. gray creek there and uh was here until uh halfway through high school and then i moved we moved back to the u.s and i was down in washington state in wow. Just south of Seattle, and lived there for the rest of high school, and then I went to university in uh, Bellingham in West at Western Washington University. So I've I've bounced all over. I don't live in Concord. That's funny. That's really yeah. Funny. And then when I when I was done university, my parents ended up coming back here, and so I, I mean I didn't really know what to do after you know I graduated with an art degree, so I came back here, and I've been in Canada ever since. So. Oh, so you met your husband here then? Yes, yes. Yeah. Wow. So 16 years. How old are your boys? Uh, my oldest is um, Dane. He is 13, turning 14. Wow. Really came here in a month, so 14-ish. And wow. then our middle son, Leaf, he is uh, 10. And uh, Bryn is 8, turning 11, turning 9. So wow. they're, yeah, they're about a year apart for a while, but two years in school, so. And they all play hockey. Yep. Yep. They're all hockey players. How do you do this? Uh, it's it's a busy schedule. <laughs> so yep. you drive one and Corey drives another. Yep. And two at one time. Wow. All the and time. They, all, they all love it still. Like all these yep. years. It's been how many years? Yeah. Now? Well, they started when they were young, like four, four or five years old, right? So they've been going hard. And our middle is a goalie. So he kind of has a whole different position. So they all kind of have their own position and they travel and yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very busy, but now with COVID it's kind of weird. So. <laughs> yeah. So that's really cool. I've met your boys and I've met your husband and what a lovely family you have. It's Thank really you. neat to see that you guys are so committed to helping them succeed in what they love to do. House full of three boys. My sister's on here, Stephanie, and she has okay. twins, four boys. They're all grown up now, but four boys and a daughter. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> busy. Lots of boys. I have two boys and it's like, you know, not as busy, but three boys, that's a whole other <laughs> scenario. So God bless you in that. <laughs> if I give you any accolades for anything, it would be being a mom of young boys. Yeah. 
too. Yes. Um, I wanted to ask you also, um, you had mentioned I met you a few years back at, um, you were selling jewelry. Yes, I saw that today. Yeah. And you gave me some beautiful earrings. You blessed me. My friend bought them through you. Or, yeah. Yeah, like They were really beautiful. And um, you shared with me at that time, you had a cousin that was in a revival, mm -hmm. a group for revival. And yeah. Well, it, yeah, my cousin, uh, he runs a ministry called Time to Revive out of Dallas. So, yeah, I must mention that to you. Yeah. And you weren't, were you painting at that time as no. much? Mm -mm. No, because you hadn't mentioned that, but you were really excited about the revival. I remember you telling me how excited you were about the revival and what was happening and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to ask you about that. When um, did you first start prophetic? Oh, no, I want to ask you first about you went to university for art. Right. Yeah. Tell us. Yeah. Uh, so. OK. I'll, I'll just start with uh, just like childhood, love to draw and paint creative so all like i think i always was drawn to art and doing creative things crafting drawing painting whatever um and in high school i it's like you know when you you think of going to university or college what you're going to do with your life it's like i never i never planned ahead i just thought i'd go to art school like it's just like i just wanted to pursue art and there was n there was no afterthought with it. It was like, what do you do with an art degree? Right? <laughs> like, most people would go on and get a master's and teach or something. But I just wanted a studio art, fine art degree. So I, I never thought thought through it to think ahead. And so I went to university to uh, Western Washington, and it's a liberal arts school. Uh, I did get a, a studio drawing fine art degree. And after that, I was like, well, what do you do with this? Like, that's great. I didn't even paint in college, which is crazy thinking yeah. about that. I did drawing. So I did a lot of charcoal work, uh, experimental drawing, just photography, stuff like that. And uh, sculpture, things like that. And um, left school and was the whole I don't know what to do with this. So I just left it. Like I left school with a degree wow. and was proud of that. And then came back to Calgary and got a job. Cause wow. I think I bought into that lie of, I was, I felt like I was not good enough to do any gallery work or be some famous artist. I always, I never, I never believed in that. I had the, you know, was unique enough. And you have to remember that when you're at a liberal arts school, that's where they're pushing, they, they push really radical thinking. They push, you know, edgy art. Uh, and I just am not, my makeup isn't like that. Mm -hmm. And so I did well in school. I actually got a 4.0 in art school, which is crazy. I, I always did amazing at projects and things, but I, I just was like, I, all, I knew at the time what famous artists were coming out with. And it was like wacky, crazy, you know, pushing the edge kind of artwork. And I'm like, that's not me. And I remember someone said, your artwork's really decorative. And so it was like belittling it, right? Like, yeah. you, you, it's just decorative, it's okay. Like, but the crazy thing is, is I went into interior design after that as a job. <laughs> so I worked in interior design. I did show homework, worked with builders. Um, I help people do interiors. So obviously that was something in me that I just love pretty environments. I love color. I love feeling all that. So um, putting things together, mixing patterns, you know, I just, I just loved all that artistic part of even designing homes. So um, yeah, I just let it go. So I never really did a lot of art. I did some commission work for builders in show home work that I did. So it kind of, I used a little bit of that art skill, but I, I really never thought for, it was a good 14 year span, I think, until I got back into art full time. And that was 2014. And that's good for people to hear that are, yeah. you know, they grew up 
loving art and others have taken, you know, art school and then got married, had kids, you know, and yeah, um, and that's what I did. Married kids worked. You need to make a living. What do you do? You know, <laughs> need to eat. Yes. Um, I was going to ask you to your, your parents, were they missionaries? No, 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 but they, I know a lot of people, they're influential in ministering to people. They do ministry or something. Yeah. 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 Grew yeah. up in a Christian home. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you about, because I remember you mentioned you grew up in a Christian home, but you weren't really in that space of walking with Jesus at, at that Yeah. Time. And it's weird. Cause I never, so grew up Christian, really strong values. Amazing. Like n nothing weird about my childhood or anything. I mean, went to summer Christian camps, like the whole bit, love Jesus, but I never knew him personally. I didn't know what that meant. Like I did, didn't, didn't, didn't. And I think looking back in life, you really, it's like you have to encounter him on your own somehow. You can't, that can't be taught in you, but your parents and your family plant seeds in you, right? Yeah. It, it, it gives you this foundation and this amazing like environment to grow in it. But I think as we grow up, that's where you have to, for yourself, decide to really follow Jesus. Like, what does that really mean, right? Mm -hmm. And so that didn't happen for me until that we we had some rough times, like in our household with my husband and I, you know, in and out of losing jobs, um, you just flow through hardship, right? And hardship brought us to draw closer to God because we needed him. And so, um, and Corey has his whole other story, but we really went through a lot of, of hardship and he did too. And, you know, um, we kind of had a bottom out moment. Like we were really done, lost jobs. He dealt with addiction issues. Like we were just at a breaking point. And it's like, in those moments you cry out to the Lord even if you don't really know what you're doing. <laughs> like he knows everything, he sees you, right? And it's like everything, God sent people to us. Like that's where Dana came in, our friend Dana and yeah. Stacy knows her too, but she came to, for a Leah Sophia party. So I used to sell jewelry oh, yeah. on the side. That's how I met Stacy at a, at a, at a, it was like a vendor gathering, right? Mm -hmm. And I was one of them selling, but, uh, I had a party at my house selling jewelry and a friend of ours came and she lingered after for a long time. And I'm just like, and at that point I was like, really, it was like, God was showing up in weird ways. And I'm like, what is so real? Like, I didn't know how real he really was. Right. And she lingered and she just, she said to me, I remember, she said, I feel like the Lord sent me here. And I'm like, what? Like, I wasn't talking like that in my life at that point. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, you know, we've really been feeling like I've been really praying lately for God to be real and show up in our life. And so everywhere we went, we saw Jesus. Like, and when I say that, I would see him on a cover of a magazine in a store. Like just it was like it was glowing. Like I saw him everywhere. Normally, I would see Jesus and scriptures on the back of a car driving by me on a highway. Wow. Like everywhere I looked, I saw something that had to do with the Bible or Jesus. And I was just like Oh my gosh. It was like, this is, this is, re he's really real. Like he's, he's trying to get our attention, you know? And then we went on just this journey of healing and uh, God touched Corey's life in a powerful, radical way, healed him of addiction. Um, we just got on fire and hungry for the Lord and went after him with everything we had. And that's just like, when, when we really fully surrendered our life to him, everything changed in our life, like everything. And that's when the art came back in. So he, I, I mean, I can tell you, I'll, I'll tell you the story about that, but that's kind of, it really happened for like how, right? and healing how our soon? relationship too. Like um, our marriage relationship yeah. healed, everything about our life healed. It was amazing. So I yeah. celebrate that. Yeah. I've, I've known you for a few years. I met you when you were first starting to step back in to like what God was 
telling you and, and putting on your life. And it was, you were so passionate about, it. we spent time talking. I was like, Oh, that lady is just on fire. You were talking about yeah. the Bible. And yes. so I met you just when you were like, you know, pumped up, ready to, ready to go. Yeah. Um, my sister said, hallelujah, Stephanie. And Cheryl said redemption moments. Yeah. You probably know Cheryl from Calgary here. Yeah. Um, hey, Cheryl. How long after, um, you started um, going back to God. <laughs> Obviously, right. he, to you more, he was never left because he kept showing up. Like, yeah. I love you. Um, did you have this uh, beautiful encounter? I'd love you to share right. that. Okay. Yeah, this is this was the best. I mean, I'll never forget this. This is where my journey then shifted. So actually, during that time, there was a lot of restoration for Corey. He was on fire. I mean, there was so much going on with him. And so we were really digging in and we dived into taking healing courses. I mean, we, we just went full at it because we wanted everything to know about really God being real and miracles happening today. Right. And healings and everything. So uh, we started doing that. And then um, I was at a, I, it was actually, this was a little bit before that. I, my story kind of is jumbled between a couple of years, but when I was at, I was in Toronto actually at a Leah Sophia leadership conference. Mm -hmm. And, um, when I was there, I had a dream and I, I don't, I dream a lot and I didn't realize that was a gift from the Lord. <laughs> and as a child, I dreamed all the time. I actually had nightmares. So the wow. enemy knew a gift I had and he attacked it when I was little. Cause I remember nights being like the worst time for me. I'd have nightmares. I'd sleepwalk. It was crazy, but it I would, I now know I was seeing, I, it's how God speaks to me in the night. So I had a dream when I was in Toronto in the night and it was very vivid and it felt so real and it was short. It was like powerful and short. And I woke out of it and I was just like, Whoa, it was like rattled me. And all it was, was, um, I remember I was on a stage in the dream and I remember the floor being like red velvet, like, you know, like runner, like a red velvet runner all over. And I was standing next to an easel, uh, art easel with a painting on it. And the painting, all I remember, it was purple. The, the color of paint was very vivid purple. And I don't know what was it was on it, but I remembered it was purple. And I remember feeling in the dream either proud of that I was doing this. It was like, I felt, I knew I was attached to that piece of art, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And it was on a stage. So I didn't know if it was like an award or if it was like, I didn't understand what the stage was, mm -hmm. but I felt like this is what I was supposed to do. Like in my life is do artwork. And I woke out of it and I'm like, man, it just like all these, like, I need to be doing art. Like I just felt every part of me being like, I got to go back to like the days I did art school. I mean, this is 13 some years later, right? Yeah. And I remember telling Corey, I'm like, I have this really vivid dream and I it just, I can't shake it. Like I couldn't shake it. And he's like, well, you should be doing art. That's what you're good at. And so I'm like, oh, and then so that kind of went and I never, I, so what I did, and I did not know this at the time what I was doing. And this is how I love how God works through people is he put that in me in the night. So when I came back from Toronto, I remember I'm all I knew I needed to do. I'm like, I don't even know what that was, but I went to the store and I bought purple paint. Like I went and bought a can of purple paint. You were ready. I'm like, I've got to paint something with purple. Like I just have to do this. I don't know what that dream was. This was like a prophetic art piece. And I had no idea at the time what this was like. I had zero idea. And I remember all I felt like, what, what, what do I need to paint that's purple? And I saw, it's like, I could, all I saw was, um, you know, wh oh, how do you say it? It's that flower with whisterly or, mm, I can't even pronounce it. It's a flower and it, there's those purple, they almost look like lilacs, but they're dropping all over. It looks really like if you're in a garden of those, it would be just like this canopy of purple flowers falling on you. And so I just painted kind of an abstract version of that paint, that flower. So I did a flower, purple flower, mm -hmm. and I called it my dream. Like I titled it my dream. Cause I didn't know 
Wisteria. 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 That's it. Yes. Wisteria. That's what it was. Wow. And later, way years later, someone gave me a word about Wisteria. And so God has confirmed all of this through the years of what that was for me when I painted that. And it was like, it was just like a window of heaven for me that I could bring down and put on a canvas. Mm -hmm. And that's it. I just painted this purple painting and I'm like, this is neat. Like, okay. It's like, I didn't know what I was, I was just like, okay, I did that. But then rapidly after that, things just started coming. And the next thing that happened was a friend of mine who homeschooled her daughter. She asked me, she knew I did art. I talked to her. I must've told her about some stuff, but she's like, I homeschool my daughter. She's really artistic. Would you consider giving her little art lessons? And I'm like, what? Like, I don't, that's, that's kind of like, I don't know how to do this. Right. I don't know how to teach art. Um, but I'm like, yeah, you know, sure. Why not? So she came to my house once a week for, I don't even remember the length of time. It was like eight weeks or so. Every week I, I taught this little girl in my house, something, some art thing. And I remember the day that I was going to get, it was, I think the second time I had her, I wanted to teach her some charcoal drawing stuff and set up a little still life. And we were going to do charcoal and um, charcoal is what I did in school, in university. And so I had, I had an art kit in university that I would take with all my charcoal and all my erasers, everything. And uh, I'm like, where's that box? And <laughs> I don't remember where I put it. It was so long. It was so long since I, I had that box out. And I remember just in my head, I saw a picture of it, like in my garage under dust in boxes. And sure enough, I went out there and it was there. Like wow. here it is. And I'm by myself in my house. And so I bring this dusty art kit into my kitchen and I'm kind of dusting it off. And while I'm doing it, I'm like, I just felt like, and I didn't know at the time, but I felt like the presence of God come in the room. And I felt like that something's going to happen when I open this box. Like it's just something's going to happen. Like I could feel it, that atmosphere, you know? And I'm like, oh. And I, so I clipped it open. I opened the top and inside the art box, I taped. And I don't, I know what I did back then, but I didn't remember it was there. And I taped, and I have it in a little frame now. I keep it. Oh, nice. and here's what I had taped in my art box. Wow. Jesus. It's a, it's a picture of Jesus. Wow. Jesus praying. Oh, wow. And you can see the tape. I even kept it because it was just, and it's. Put it, the, put it up closer to the camera. So uh, there. Yeah, there. Yeah, there. Yeah. So that's, that's what I had. And you, at that time, everywhere I went, I saw Jesus. Like his yeah. face. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. and so I open this kit and here's Jesus right here. And I'm like, oh. it was every part of me. I just thought I'd see some pencils and here I see Jesus. Wow. And I remember in like 1998, I think I painted this for my parents as a gift. Wow. So I had this kind of a thumbnail of it tapped in there from that time, like, 11 years before. So I would have forgotten about it, right? And here's what I heard. It hit me, my my whole chest was like, <gasps> it's like I couldn't hardly breathe. And I just started weeping, like crying hysterically. And all I heard audibly, like the most audible, I've, I haven't heard God audibly, like maybe two times, but that's one time. And I heard him say, I've been waiting in here this whole time for you. And I'm like, oh, like just, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. And I kept repenting. Like, I'm sorry I let this go. I'm sorry I didn't know you were in here. And uh, it was like he knew the art gift was attached to what he wanted me to do in life. And he wow. was waiting. It's like, so when you hear Jesus say, I've been waiting for you to, to open this, you're like, Phew. <laughs> you know? And it'll I'll never forget that because... What that taught me was how patient God is with people. He waits for you, wow. you know, because he and he's constantly pursuing because at that point, he, everywhere I looked, he was pursuing us. Mm. He was pursuing me back into this, you know, have, giving me dreams in the night about it and all this stuff. And all it's just like, boom, it hit me. And I'm like, 
whoa. And I heard him say, I'll take you places if you do this for me. So he wanted me to surrender my art gift to him wow. and do it for him. And so I just was like, man, you know, cause that whole time, you know, in life, in the world, you come out of art school, it's so inundated with weird stuff. And like, then you want to like fit into something to sell work or it's like the world. I, I couldn't, I didn't fit into being an artist in the world, you know? But I think God knew, no, I, I wanted your gift for me. So oh. it's almost like, are you willing to do that? Cause if you are, it's go time. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I didn't know what, what to do. And then right after that encounter, it was like rapid speed. Like, I don't even remember time at that point. God just started opening doors. And at that time, uh, we were drawn to imagine in Calgary and I, we met Richie Seltzer and Richie gave me a, uh, he was praying over me and gave me a word. And that word, I, I really believe it was a word of activation into the prophetic arts because his word was you are a prophetic artist. He didn't really know me at that point. Like we didn't know each other well. Um, and he said, you have a creative gift. You're a prophetic artist. And I didn't like, I don't know what that is. Like, I, I just, we were so new at anything walking with the Lord, like in the spirit. Right. And he gave me a word saying that I would fly all over on airplanes and paint on stages. Mom of little boys. <laughs> but when he said, you're going to paint on stages. Yeah. And I looked at him and I'm like, I had a dream with a painting on a stage. Wow. And he said, you were, you, God was showing you your destiny in the prophetic arts. And so everything started kind of piecing together. And I'm like, wow, what does this mean? Like, what is this? What, what is a prophetic artist? Like, I had no idea. Like, I don't even know what this is. So I started kind of like looking into it, uh, learning anything I could, reading books, whatever. Like, I just started like soaking up anything I could. Right. And I struggled because what I saw at the time, I'm like, that's not me. I don't fit into this. Like I didn't fit into what I saw online as a prophetic art. Mm -hmm. So, but God taught me along the way of how to do, how to use your gift that's unique to you. You don't have to copy somebody. Never do that. Actually, I'll always say, don't ever try to fit into somebody else's mold because mm -hmm. he uses everyone uniquely to touch people, you know? So anyway, it was just this journey that just started. But after that word, I think about, that was 2014. And we had a conference here, a Holy Spirit thing in Calgary. And Richie said, you need to paint on, you need to prophetic paint. And he pushed me into it. So I'll always thank Richie for being yeah. bold and pushing someone who hadn't even painted in 14 years to do this at a conference, I was scared out of my mind. I mean, shaking. Now, did um, you stand on the stage? Yeah. You? He's like, you're going to get up and do this. And I'm like, ah. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, I had zero idea. But, but that came up powerfully that night for me and taught, like, just, it just was like, you can't, what I love about God is you can't make this stuff up. You can't write it. He just brings people to you and, things just happen when you walk out in obedience, mm. and even though you walk through the fear of it. Cause I was so scared, petrified. And after that encounter or not, not, the, it wasn't an encounter, but after that night, um, that was my first prophetic painting on a stage. And after that, um, I just want to stop you for a second because yeah, yeah. everything you just shared, there was so much treasure in it. And there's many people who are waiting for years yeah. here that um, whether it's art or music or whatever it is that they've kind of just dusty out in the garage under all these things, That's you know, works, yeah. and the profoundness that you said that, you know, God was there waiting. Jesus said, I was waiting here for you. You know, that is such a word. Like, if that's all that we talked about tonight, I mean, that, 
I just wanted to resonate with that because yeah. I think that goes to a deep place for some people. Like even for me, like with my music, it's mm-hmm. it's like, what is Jesus waiting for us? Right. You know? Yeah. And you said something, I forget the way you worded it, but your art was going to be blessed if it was for him, right? right. Well, that was an instruction I felt like he said to me very clearly. Yeah. Well, I'll take you, and he said, I'll take you places, which is weird because yeah. I traveled after that. Yeah. But if yeah. you, you do it for me. Yeah. So it wasn't like that art couldn't be mine, it was his. Wow. But he showed me that right away. And I think he needed to do that for me to um, understand that this is unto him, this is worship to him, right? That he can use us as vessels to be, however, like for me, it's art. So that art is a voice for him to speak to other people, yes. right? And he showed me that right away. It's the sound of color, right? Yeah. It's like, it's not just uh, seeing, it's it's hearing. It's it, like, there's so much in art. But what I find is interesting is that you took charcoal yep. a, a, as a training professional and God uses painting i know (laughs) i only did black and white in college wow and now all i do is color i mean and that's part of something he showed me but that was part of me coming alive in him wow for me to be able to express in the fullness of a palette right Cause there was a lot of stuff, even though I wasn't a messed up kid, I wasn't, I didn't have a lot of issues, but there are issues deep down in people. And I, I knew I, I he showed me along my journey of, you know, the, the fear of man that I carried mm-hmm. that I didn't want to pursue certain things mm-hmm. or I didn't believe in myself or, you know what I mean? Like you're not good enough or we hear all those lies. You know what you mean. Right? <laughs> yes. And it's a lot of this mental talk. Yeah. Uh, just certain things along the way that had just eaten away at me enough where I where I didn't pursue it, you know. But and broke free of a lot of things. I had a lot of issues with it was fear of man, but it was like performance. It was like mm-hmm. I felt like it had to be, you know. You always have to do something grand or whatever. But God showed me how the simple things are so powerful. Wow. You know, we don't have to have this masterpiece for him to speak through, mm. you know, because him to him, it's a masterpiece, right? Like this whole flip of, of how he can use the simple to speak something powerful. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he really had to break that down for me. And that was part of me walking it out with him. And I would hear him speak to me about certain things and get over a lot of, of, you know, whatever the enemy put in me that I discounted things or he would, he was all, he would just, I took, went through years of him just correcting things along the way, mm-hmm. like of my mindset, mm-hmm. just correcting it. Very yeah. true. And imagine if you hadn't um, went and bought the purple paint because I, like something broke in yep. painting. There was an I, act of like, obedience. I didn't know I was doing Yes. But it did. So if I can say anything to anybody, if you feel the Lord pulling on you to do something, just do it. Like, don't think about the outcome. Don't whatever. Just do the act of doing something, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. This act of, for me, it was just the act of creating. It just unlocked something, right? Yeah. And yeah. Then, this God, then God could speak to you further. And that's, that's very um, important to remember, like, you know, and as I watched your art, you know, develop and grow as others around you, you know, who know you so well, um, you can see how God speaks to you more and more and more as you are stepping in obedience. Right. I wanted to talk about you have some people on here, but they're all Facebook users. But I think it's Dana, <laughs> your mom. Oh, hi. <laughs> and Arlene. I don't know because they're all Facebook users, no names. So uh, they're all saying some, you know, uh, amazing journey incredible journey mindy god will use the talents he gives us we just have to trust and believe yeah and yes dana we can attest how far she has come her mama is here and she has seen it all Rhonda, <laughs> your daughter is to us all yes Rhonda, 
She really is a blessing. And these women have seen and walked with you and praying with you. And I believe your mom was praying behind the scenes, you know, all those years. So she, when, when you had that encounter, that must have been like as a mama, that like that's such a beautiful gift that Jesus gave to her too at the same time, you know, because he, he spoke to you directly and you were like, yes, <laughs> like you, know, you, you changed, you shifted, your life shifted. Yep. We That's really a testimony of mama's and papa's prayers behind the scenes, right? That which I want to give honor to mm -hmm. mama. <laughs> I know you have to make your own decision, but uh, uh, some of us have adult children who still aren't married, and we're asking to, you know, God to bring them to Him. And you know, the other day I was singing a song, "The Prodigals Are Coming Home." So a mama's yeah. and, and papa's prayers really do make an impact in in our children, and it, it may be later than we expect. But what a testimony to your parents for praying, you know, and covering you and not to give up. Like every child is different. I have four children, you know, so my sister has yeah. five, like, you know, not to give up on any of our children because you're such a testimony that, you know, in Corey is such a testimony of how you came yeah. yes. through and your marriage surviving yeah. that. Yep. You know, and keeping yeah. together. So I just want to honor you in that. Um, yeah. There was, there was the first time you were asked to come to Florida. Was that your first? Like no. Oh, uh, yeah. So right after I painted at that conference with Richie, mm -hmm. and uh, he he gave me that word before that I would fly all over and paint on stages. So I was like, wow. And I remember thinking, how do you even do that? Like yeah. where? what this is such a bizarre this is not like a career that you like go interview for you know what i mean like this is bizarre anyway and my, so that's where my cousin came in so he he uh is an evangelist uh started a ministry in in the states in dallas and they were and we grew up as children at my grandparents farm and I would see them periodically, we, but they lived in Indiana growing up and we were in Canada. So we were kind of all over. We'd see them for uh, summer and Christmases, right? But I hadn't seen them, I think it was like five years until that point at a family reunion. So we didn't know each other's lives, mm -hmm. you know? And I just remember <laughs> um, one morning out of the blue, I get a text on my phone and it says, hey, it's your cousin. And he said, there's a revival breaking out in Indiana. So it was in Indiana. And he yep. said, God woke me up and said to fly you here to paint on stage. Wow. And I was just like, what? Like the exact words that yep. fly you here to paint on stage. And I just was like, unbelievable. Like how in the world? So that door literally, and I remember that was January, 2015. Like it was the beginning of the year, 2015. So the next week, like it was immediate. He's like, okay, if you're coming, let's go. And I was just like, this is crazy. Like he had no idea how to work of that exact word. Wow. And so that was a, that was like a month. And that thing that got open the door. I flew to Indiana. I had only painted one time on stage and nobody there knew. I, I like, Imagine. like they thought it was like some painter. Like, like I had no clue what I was doing. So scared, but I knew I had to do it. I just had to get over the fear. And it was a crazy time in 2015 in Indiana. We had, he gathered and united the churches in this whole community. Wow. It was a powerful, powerful move of unifying the church, which we need now. Yeah. Never, right? In this time we're living, we can see, but but back then, and so I just painted the like this simple painting. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing. And uh, it, it went pretty good. And I'm like, okay. And like, no one really knew that I didn't know what I was doing. And it was just so powerful and fun. But we had, we had just powerful uh, time. He would preach. I was painting. We had worship people. I mean, it was just beautiful, this mix. And how God wove everything together. And then he was just like, hey, do you want to come back? So he kept, I would go for like four day stints while they were in Indiana and it lasted about seven months. Wow. So I was 
then traveling a lot. And then I just kind of just joined in the team and would travel as we went city to cities. We were in Florida, Mississippi, uh, Ohio, Wisconsin. Like we kind of went all over and did these revival meetings in these cities and united the churches. And I just painted while he preached. <laughs> it was awesome. Where are those paintings? The ones that you oh, And as I did them, they would do a, a silent auction in each location and they would just, people would just buy them. So I honestly, at that point, I didn't keep track. Like I didn't know what was going. We just, we just did our thing and moved on. So I don't even know who has my paintings out there. Wow. And I think I did in one, one of the years, I think I did like over 70 paintings in, in a two year stint. I had over 200 of them out there because I would do one painting in, the, in an evening. Yeah. So every night I would do a painting. So I got really, it was just a training ground where I would just, I could, I could finish a canvas from start to finish in a two hour stint of a service. Wow. So, but it was, I mean, I, every night, like I would get nervous. And I, I think after about a year and a half of that, something broke. I had an encounter on the stage with, with some stuff and, and um, had some prayers after it was actually kind of a demonic attack. And uh, finally I, I had a prayer that broke off this spirit of performance where it'd make me so nervous. And, and after that I could paint in so much more freedom like just way more freedom to enjoy it too. So we did that kind of performance, right? Wow. So we and did that for a while and then we shifted too. So everything has shifted and that's when I started painting the Bible. But And you had your team back home here, your the home church and you know, imagine all these people supporting, praying for you. Like that's what's so beautiful too is community encouraging and supporting and even having your paintings on their wall <laughs> right Dana like and I'm sure other people I haven't been in everybody's homes but you you have paintings all over Calgary area I'm sure uh, that people have bought and and put in their homes and I've seen some amazing pictures of like they just hit you in places that the the picture does have a story and if it, it, God just releases that story through your art so I just want to congratulate you on that because like God is just, someone said, Mary says, paint in freedom. Yes, you have yeah. some freedom. And I've, I've watched you from my perspective of like, I went, you know, away for five years and came back and, and I was like, whoa, like Mindy, <laughs> like, your art has changed. So when I saw you last year, yeah, <laughs> I ran with you at uh, Donna De Silva from Bethel uh, in Cochrane here. It was uh, some training. Yeah. 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 And Mindy was painting there and we talked after and she just gives me a glimpse on her phone oh. of a picture that she was working on. And I, it's, it was breathtaking. And I was, wow, uh, what is this? So then she shared with me and I'll let her share. Um, she had been commissioned for a project. So why don't you share this project? OK. Um, yeah. So that was uh, 2017. Uh, we, I was traveling a lot with this time to revive team, my cousin's ministry. And, uh, we, there was a shift. We felt the Lord say to pull back and study the Bible for two years and just really dive into the word. And, um, you know, everything felt like it would, oh, I'm like, well, I won't be traveling and painting then. Like, this is totally different for me. And it was okay. But and that, that's a whole story I might not get into, but um, how God prepared me ahead without knowing. Like he does that in life. He'll prepare us in seasons yeah. where we don't really know what the next season is going to be, but he already prepared us before. And I remember when I would come home from travel, I'd paint, I'd paint flowers. That's all I wanted to paint because I felt like it was my time just to decompress and all I wanted to do was paint flowers and I now know that's just because that's like it's like the garden time with the Lord mm -hmm. and where I can sit with him and paint the garden and just it's like this you know sometimes I don't even have to pray I just I'm in this space and I can feel him and I can hear him and I, I it's just our communion time and uh 
that was a whole year before this unfolded. And as I was flying to Dallas for a meeting when we were going to discuss this new shift in the ministry, I remember thinking, well, I'll probably not do so much with them anymore. But God told me in the airplane, I heard him say, I have a project for you at home for that two years. Wow. And I'm like, okay, you know, I didn't know what it would be. I thought it was going to be my own project, like at home. And uh, we were in this meeting and talking about it. And I just said to the team, I'm like, you know, it's really going to change my role with you guys. Because I was the only one who lived out of country as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I probably won't see anyone so much. But anyway, because Kyle was going to teach and video and uh, teach through the Bible uh, in his studio in Dallas. So um, Anyway, then he said, I said, but I know God told me I'd, I'd do a project at home. So I'm not worried about it. I know he'll show me what that is. And I said that and Kyle's like, you're going to paint the Bible. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what? And it just, and I knew that's what it was. Right when he said it, he's like, well, if, if I'm going to teach it, you're, you'll paint it. And I'm like, oh man, you know, and when this stuff happens, you don't, I don't think I understood the weight of what that really meant. At the time, I'm like, okay, and he's such a go-getter. He's like, okay, you're going to go home and paint Genesis because I need it shipped in a week. Because like, he wanted to do a recording. And he's like, I want the painting in the studio when I record, like sitting behind him on an easel, you know, like this kind of having as his backdrop. And I was just like, oh, my goodness, okay. So not enough time to really think through what we were doing or what, how, how, hard, how much, like, the, the perseverance this would take. I'm like, sure. So get home, paint Genesis. And actually I have. You had to read through the book and decide what you were going to paint. Yeah. So this, I, this was, I have it under, uh, I shouldn't have it under plastic, but I do to protect it. So this is Genesis. Wow. Uh, and so simple. And meanwhile, I, I've been painting flowers for a year. So I was so in the garden mode. <laughs> When I painted it, I heard the Lord say to me, you're going to paint the garden throughout the entire Bible. Like whatever painting you're doing, you're going to, you're going to weave the garden through it. And I was just like, wow, that's awesome. It's because it's like, he was like, it's the story of returning to the garden. It's like the whole Bible is his, his plan to get us back, like to return and restore his kingdom. Right. And I'm just like, man. So it's just a beautiful, like, okay. So I, I literally just started painting as I went and painting what I needed to. And they had a schedule because they had a schedule in Dallas. So I'd paint, ship them, get it done. But that's 66 books. And in the meantime, I had to study it. I had to read it. I hadn't read through the Bible. Like I, I went through the Bible in confirmation when I was like in com I, in confirmation classes when I was little, but not to the depth of like, I never read through the Bible. So this was all some new stuff for me. And I'm like, and so I read through scripture. I would take notes. I would pray and I would just, God would show me like compositions in my head of, and I would sketch them of, of each book, but there's so much meat in the Bible. It's like, how do you, the challenge for me as an artist was how do you wrap up in one painting yeah. this book? Yeah. So I really had to trust God that whatever came out was enough of that book, right? Mm -hmm. And it was, there was some, I mean, it was challenging, but he told me early on, don't think ahead. Because then I would think, oh, what if I paint something in this book that's better for another book? Because, you know, so many stories interweave and like symbols. So I did a lot of symbolism in painting at that point where I would, I would paint an object that meant something in the book because how do you paint spiritual things? Right? Like think about that. Those are my challenges. How do I paint the Holy spirit? How do I paint the concept of peace? How do I paint how to trust God? These were spiritual concepts that I had to figure out how to do it. And God would just kind of show me in the book, either things were mentioned. Um, you know, there's so much description of nature in the Bible. Like I, I would always pull out nature imagery because I'd see him talking through his creation. Um, you know, 
symbolic things that represented a character in the Bible. So I just, I just kind of was like one book at a time and it took two years. That was what I did 2000 the, at the cusp of 2018. And then I finished right before 2020. Wow. So I finished right before in October before 2020. Wow. And I remember you have like first Kings or you enter lot, they can be separate pictures, but they, Oh yeah. They two, two together. Yeah. Yeah. So then when, when like it, I think it was first and second Samuel were the yeah. first books I did as, as a first and second book. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it was just, you know, Oh, these are first and second books. They each have their own story in them. But I just felt like, well, let's do two, a, one composition that came together through one book. So I did the first and second as one painting that were two different paintings. So cool. Kind of how I did it with those. Like first, second Kings was one composition in two paintings. So amazing. Each painting had symbolism attached to that book, right? Wow. And then I found a common thread for for the like something that weave the two comp the two paintings together. So you can see that on my website. If you look the whole video I, on there, like the, well, the video kind of uh, the ministry put together a video of just kind of a little snippet of my journey, but, but the actual art you can see, I put it all online. I'm just going to show, I'm just going to do a screen share. Just a second. Yeah. Um, I'm learning guys. Yeah. <laughs> Share screen. I wonder if I have it. Oh, I can't. I'm in the way or what? I have to put it. How do I share the screen when it's? Oh, I have to go behind there, right there. That one. I don't know. It's okay. Okay. Uh, For some reason, it's not coming up um, to share it. I have to make it whole bigger. I think. That's all right. But if anyone goes to my website, which I can give you at the end, you'll see. You can click on the top link, like there's a main bar on the website and there's something that says Bible art and that Bible art you can click into and then see old and new Testament. I had to break it down on the website into old and new, but yeah, it, I mean, it's, it was just a really in-depth project and it's, it's on my off time of the doing that. I would just paint flowers. Like it, I, right now I'm actually painting mini flowers. It's just, my way of just kind of like doing something fun and in the garden. But when I was done the project, I really, I heard the Lord say, you're not done. And I'm like, what? Like that was an intensive two years of my life. Like, what do you mean? I'm not done. And I really felt him say that I need to continue painting deeper layers of scripture. Wow. And so um, this year and I, and it's been interesting because I'm not on the schedule and with everything else going on in the world, it seems like things get disrupted, but I've been, I've let go of time frames and I'm just, I'm painting Jesus's life and ministry, which is more of the gospels I'm focusing on and just painting pictures that represent him and his life. Are you doing more people then? No. Well here I'm doing. So another instruction I heard God say to me, is if you'll notice in my Bible art, I do hands and feet, but I never have done people's faces. And I felt it was, I felt important to do that because then you don't attach it to a character or a person. You can put yourself into it. So I did a lot of hands and feet, but that way you can, you can put yourself into that, um, that, you know, we're the hands and feet of him now. Right. So even in, in this Jesus series, like you can see this one behind me, I I've done hands, hands, yes. but I'm, I'm really keeping the face, um, out of it. So I just feel like with art, then you can sit there and really contemplate and put yourself in that painting more. It, you know, it kind of, I don't know, compositionally, it, it just pulls you into a different way of looking at it where you're not just looking at a character in a story. You're, you can look at yourself in that story. Right. That's good. So and you had some pretty probably emotional in those two years or three young boys and trying to do the 
time to get that project done. You must have had some pretty emotional uh, heart turning inside out from some of the things you were reading and painting. Yeah. Like that must have been an unbelievable journey with God. It, for you. it was, I shut most of the world off around me in those two years. I had to, because I was reading so much of the Bible that I felt like all I could handle was my kid's schedule and this painting project. And like, I really did, I pulled back from doing a lot of things outside of this. I was, it was so consuming. It, it's like, I, I understand like method actors, what that would feel like a little bit, you know, when people put themselves in a character and they live that for a while. That's what I felt like. And it was very emotional. I'd cry a lot, weeping. I didn't know why I'd weep, but I wept all the time. I cried more in those two years than I ever have. But now I understand what I was like. God would show me glimpses of things, but not till after I was completely done. Did I understand why I would cry so much? And I, I know now I was crying through intercession. Like I was painting. It was like I was painting as an intercessor for the church. That's what I felt because I would see images. And actually, this is I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but. I would be painting certain paintings and be seeing imagery of like people in persecution. Or I would see, it's like, I would feel things so like deep in the spirit that I would just cry. And I didn't know like what I was crying about or who it was for, but it was just a really intense, I would feel, I would feel a weight in the spirit of what what was what was happening even though i had no words to put to it mm -hmm. but i also was paint i was painting so it's not words it's it's mm -hmm. pictures right mm -hmm. so and i didn't understand but we had one art show the graduation of this um revived school we called it um and if anyone wants to go in depth through a two-year study of the word it's reviveschool.org and you can go on that and take a two-year in-depth study um through that with the project i did with my cousin there and uh we did a graduation in indiana at the end and they put up all the art and it was the first time i'd seen it all together oh, yeah. I was it as i painted it right yeah. and it was a it was a really emotional powerful moment for me when i was in there because it was like this two years of scripture surrounding me in it, like an art gallery right and whew, like I can even feel the emotion. What I saw, and I just stood back and could see people viewing it and people would just start crying. They were like weeping. And people would come up to me just to say, you know, just to say hi as the artist. And I know like, and and it was, it was incredible to watch, but you know, men would come up to me to say one thing and they would just start crying. And they're like, I don't, I, it's like they couldn't even have words. They would just be weeping instead. And that's when it hit me. That's when God said, that's why you were crying for other people to encounter something. And I'm like, Phew, like, wow. Wow. and that's, what's so powerful about things that we don't, it's like, if we're used as vessels, God can do such powerful things through us. If we don't figure it all out too. Right. Just be obedient in it. Because it's I didn't have to know all these outcomes. I just had to be present in the moment of doing it. That's it. Yeah. Your mom is saying that you're gonna do a art walk through the Bible when our restrictions are lifted here. That yeah. would be really exciting. It's right down the hill from me. And your mom also said it was so she was blessed to be at the art show. It was like walking on holy ground. Yeah. Wow. It was, it was pretty awesome. Profound, like yep. Lindsay, you have so much beautiful, profound in your story of how God has journeyed you through, and now how your art is touching so many. And this painting, people are asking, uh, what is this painting behind, behind you? That it, what, what is this it? Mm -hmm. Well, so wow. this one, when it, it's. Uh, it's based off of John 1, 1 and Genesis 1. So when the word became flesh and it's just, so it's just, it's like, it's like, G, I, I'm imagining it's like Jesus holding the Bible, the word 
and the butterflies represent the, the resurrection power that he has. And then um, I did 33 butterflies in this painting to represent his life on earth. Um, I just felt, I just felt symbolically to put, you know, the age of when he was crucified. But uh, what I felt in this, this is the beginning. This is the first one of my next series that I'm working on now at home of his life. And so <laughs> and the dark waters is like when the spirit hovered over the waters, you know, in the beginning. So wow. it's kind of, it's kind of just, it's like the composition I saw while I was reading all this, those scriptures together and how it wove old and new Testament and, and the word became flesh and, and was with us. So it, it's just the beginning of that. So I, I have it here and I need to get focused again on keep going on this. I've done five paintings on that series so far. So, And your other paintings from the project that's done are all on your website, Mindy Oten, O-A-T-E-N and M-I-N-D-I. Yeah. It's on the screen here, um, uh, dot com. But you can purchase prints of yep. all of those paintings from the books of the Bible. And you have the video in there as well, right? Of yeah, the video is on my main page. If you just scroll down, you'll see I'm holding, it's just my legs and I'm holding one of the prints. And there's a, a, a play button. And a lot of people don't realize you can click on it and it'll play a video. But That's good to know because yeah. that's powerful too if you want to go watch that. And also, Mindy, you have a club. Um, oh yeah. Um, so this is new to this year. Um, I just felt I ha I don't, I'm not traveling anymore so much painting prophetically. And I just, that part of me still wants to paint. And, uh, I just felt like, you know, Lord, I would like to just, I just felt he instructed me like, do this. It's like new things all the time. Right. And, um, so every month, I do a prophetic piece of art just that I, I pray about. And I just ask the Lord, what, what picture do you want me to do this month? And he just gives me a little word with it, like some scriptures and what he's been speaking to me about it through it. So, um, and then I paint, I do a painting and then I decided to do this monthly print club. And so I call it my collector's club where if you join it, you will get this print that I do in the mail once a month. So it's like a surprise. It's like a magazine subscription. You can, it's almost like that where you don't know what's coming in the mail, but you're going to get this eight by 10. And I, I have a, like this, it's an eight by 10 print. Wow. That kind of size that I do. So this was my last month's print. Mm -hmm. Um, So they're just these compositions and he shows me what, the flowers mean like there's a story kind of behind the composition. And so it's kind of a fun way to get a surprise in the mail. It's a little art print that you can frame every month. And that's kind of the way that I'm having people support me to keep painting really, because it's, it's, it's not, it's not an offering to me, but you're buying something with it, but it's supporting me continuing to do things like this Jesus paintings and stuff, because I'm not, I'm not selling those right now. So it's just, it's something that's fun. You get a word and a beautiful piece of art from the Lord and you're sewing into my, my, uh, my art basically as oh, we do, really. So. Wow. Mindy, that's awesome. Like that's a great opportunity for people to nice surprise too. And yeah. Kind of fun. Blessed from the word of God, like to be blessed from Jesus life. Like there's, you know, nothing like that. Right. Thank you for sharing tonight. That was that was amazing. Um, I usually like to take the last um, time. I extended our time online so that we could pray for people. Or God gives a word. And I thought it would be really cool to pray over those who are struggling to step out and to restart or to, you know, to step right. out for the first time or whatever. Whatever God leads, um, Mindy, feel free to. Um, okay. go for Holy Spirit lead. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, just for me, I'm going to pray for, I just feel for anyone who doesn't feel like they 
can be used by God in just a simple, like in a powerful way. What I'm trying to say is that God can use you in any way in your life, in the simplicity of it. Um, any little thing that he's gifted you with can be a gift he can use to speak to other people and impact them in powerful ways. Yeah. So my encouragement for anyone is that he, the, the, the more you ask him, the more he'll reveal, you know, what he's designed you for and how you can bless others through your life, through whatever he's gifted you with. So, um, and he's patient. So if you feel like you've put down something in life for whatever reason it is, um, it's never too late to pick it up again. Right. So I, I know that for sure that he, he can redeem time and he can teach you pretty quickly what, you know, how he can use your gift in extraordinary ways. Um, so I encourage anyone who feels like whatever it is at any level, you know, mm -hmm. that he can use you powerfully. So that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yep. So is anybody, uh, feeling like they really need some, some blessing in, in this area, in the feed? Somebody want to, uh, I don't uh, know. Pardon, go ahead. Did you have something? Oh no, I'm. I don't see any. I don't see chats on this. So. Uh, if you click to the right, um, there's like a chat for comments or something. Okay. There's banners, comment. You see? Oh, okay. Now I do. I didn't know that. <laughs> I can't see people's names. Maybe you can if they're your friends. I don't know. Can you see people's names? No, I don't. Okay, so I know your mom. I just went onto my Facebook so I can see some of the names of who's writing what. But I, I just want to call out um, those of you who have been really um, in a low place and in a season of like just waiting and feeling like you're boxed in. I, I just feel like God wants to bless you and to encourage you in in this season mm -hmm. yes someone wants prayer in that area. yes shantu i see you so god i thank you for shantu mm -hmm. and i thank you for what you have placed on her life and father god i thank you that you are bringing healing and peace mm -hmm. in this season and rest and god that sh you you've got her i, I hear i've got this I hear him say, I got this, you know, and Shantu, he's got this. And so I just pray a blessing and all the creativity, um, mm -hmm. that the overwhelm would be broken off in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, that the overwhelm would be broken off and that you would have freedom and breakthrough in Jesus' name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you see any other names? We have your mom, my sister Stephanie, Dana, Crystal is CI. Um, Cheryl Gwang, Connie, Mary, Kimmers, D, Christine Palachuk, um, just looking through Arlene Robertson. So we have a few people on here that we know personally here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Arlene. Arlene, you're very gifted too. She always, you paint. I, I, you're, you're an artist too. Yes. I think so. I I I remember having conversations with Arlene. So, Arlene, call I don't, it up. I don't know where you're right now with with uh, your creative gift, but um, it, it, I really feel like it would be a beautiful thing to just that you need to create. Yeah. Um, and really, it, it would be a healing. It would be a. It's just like your secret place with the Lord. Uh, so I just bless you, Arlene, in your creative gift and hope to see you soon. I haven't seen her for so long either. Well, I have to see this, this art, artistry of this beautiful woman. That would be awesome. Um, mm -hmm. I, I feel Dana, um, I was just hearing that you are in the practical so much right now in the 
you know, the technical and the practical and, you know, selling and renting, you know, doing all these things. Um, yet God has put creativity and it's creativity in a different way than other people uh, walk in. It's a, it's a unique gift that God has given you, Dana, to, to um, use to minister to people, even in the prophetic, a creative way in the prophetic and in words. So I just bless you in the words that God wants to release because I know you're on a fast and busy pace right now. But I pray that God will give you downloads of words um, because I, I told you recently that you carry such a presence when you come into a room mm -hmm. that um, people are impacted so greatly, whether you're happy or you're low. <laughs> and so God has put this authority on you to lead and, and to lead many. And it's like, it's, it, it's not finished. It's not finished. It's been put on hold, but God is going to release it in the next season in a whole new way creatively your gatherings the the people that he brings in there's something different that god's stirring up in you dana like i i i've never seen this um for you in this way i know you really well but i see it's something that god is going to speak to you about that you haven't known about the gifting that you carry <laughs> that's what i'm hearing so there's a gifting on you that god's going to surprise you and it's creative so bless you in that dana i love you girl that's awesome thank you jesus thank you jesus and arlene i just want to add to um the blessing that you are you're a mama you're a mama. Mm -hmm. And there's so many daughters that love you. You have so many daughters. And God is bringing them in. Like, you know, that verse in the Bible that says they're coming from, you know, the verses where they're carrying gifts and they're coming from all nations. Mm -hmm. Ooh, like, <laughs> Arlene, that's for you. Mm. They're coming. The women, they're coming. The women are coming and they need you. And when you pray with me, like up at the front of the church, that one day it was it's so hard and you come and hug me and you released such a profound word of God over my life. I'd snot pouring out my nose. <laughs> and you mothered yeah. your mama mm -hmm. to so many of us. And even when I was worshiping a few weeks ago, you were writing writing in the comments and I'm worshiping and God's giving me words through you <laughs> and, and it was releasing like something so profound we were ministering together through the internet and she's not even talking just her words that God was giving her were coming through and God was releasing sound and it was so amazing so Arlene I just bless you like it's not it's not done it's not over yeah it's beginning. Mm -hmm. It's beginning, Arlene. And there's something about all the daughters coming. There's something about that that is breaking. Uh, like when I stepped into doing something financially, I felt like the chains are being broken financially, like poverty spirit off my life. I feel like as you step in and those daughters are coming and they're coming and, and I see you surrounded with all these women and and as you step in as god shows you because i know he speaks to you so clearly uh that something's gonna break it's gonna break and release that's what i hear break and release break and release break and release so in jesus name i just bless you in that arlene i love you girl i love you mm -hmm. <laughs> stephanie snot ropes the best prayer times <laughs> that's hilarious yeah this i mean this is sitting beside me but i just feel like the lord wants me to share one thing and i feel like it could be for someone so yeah. when i painted the lily of the valley in this it's hard because it's opposite, it's opposite. <laughs> it's hard to know where to do this online backwards yeah. um so it's just a simple picture of communion but i saw a picture like pouring picture of uh with lilies of the valley inside and I, when I was praying through 
you know, what is this, what does this mean? The Lord said, look up what lilies of the valleys mean in the Bible. And there's a lot of scripture on it, but um, it, re it really refers to us being That's interesting. Come back, Mindy. Well, guys, I'll wait for Mindy to come back in. Um, but Kimmers, I, I, you were highlighted to me if you're still in here. And I can't see the pictures very well because they're really small. But um, I, I see God saying to you, it's, it's about the bride and new beginnings and walking in purity and in light and hope in peace. And God has that on you, Kimmers. Um, I don't know anything about you, but I feel like it, it's like a newness in Jesus, like the bride. Um, and he's restoring. He's restoring. And so I thank you, God, for Kimmers. I pray like a revelation for her in, in beginning, in new beginnings in Jesus' name. I pray for breakthrough for her in Jesus' name. And Father God, I thank you for Mindy. Um, she's probably just trying to charge her phone or something. <laughs> but thank you for Kimmers that you brought her tonight. And Lord, whatever she's asking, her heart is crying out for. I hear that, Kimmers. Whatever, if it's Kimmers D or D Kimmers, maybe I'm saying your last name, I'm not sure. Um, whatever you're crying out for, Thanks. God hears you. Welcome back. Oh, Welcome back. my computer just, it said, went offline and it just shut off. This happened to me on Zoom, so I have to use an Ethernet cable now. I've learned. <laughs> I've learned. Yeah. <laughs> what? Welcome back. We missed oh. you. <laughs> it happened, but so I was talking about that Lily of the Valley and I, and what I felt of what I read, this is, it was pretty incredible. I started reading about Lily of the Valley and what it represents, but then in it, in it, it represents like Christ is referred to as the Lily of the Valley. It, it, it symbolizes his resurrection. It symbolizes, but it also in Song of Songs, it symbolizes us as the bride, the beloved, and that we're the, we're the lily of the valley, the fragrance of Christ. And so it was this beautiful blend, but reading more in it, I found an article and it in ancient times, so I don't know when it would have been, but uh, it says that Lily of the Valley extract was used to heal a lost voice. Whoa. And it, those, those words stuck out so clear and the Lord, cause he showed me it in a picture wow. and, and pouring. And I felt like he was saying to me that he is, he's healing lost voices in the season. Um, voices for him that we need to pour out our song, our voice, our whatever he's gifted you with to pour out the your voice in this time, that we need to be bold voices for the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, so as simple as these pictures are, he really gives me you know, deeper messages attached to them. So that picture for me, when I look at it, is not to forget to carry the voice for the Lord. And in the communion attached to it was this remember the simplicity of the gospel and the power of the blood and, and body of Christ and what he did, you know? So if that's a word for anybody not to lose your voice, I just pray uh, a spiritual, um, a supernatural healing on your voice for the Lord that whatever he's gifted you with can be used to be a voice. Amen. Like it, for me, even like I view my art as a voice, I don't have to speak, but it's there. You know what I mean? So whatever he's gifted you with through song, through conversations with friends, mm -hmm. you know, teaching your kids, even, I mean, anything mm -hmm. conversating with someone at, at work, and he prompts you like, you know, 
baking cookies and bringing them to someone. I don't, I don't know. Whatever he he can use you with, he will. So I just felt like that's we're in a season that that believers and the church need to have their voice back. So we're seeing that really right now being threatened. So. So true. Mm-hmm. And I saw a vision of this um, a few, about a month ago, four times in one week about the voice. And then God gave me a powerful word for my daughter. That was like, I, I started going to my daughter, like in the spirit, I was praying like, uh, dry bones become flesh the dry and I'm like totally like and she's like whoa and God just released them she had a dance party on her own that night and God broke something because the enemy was coming at her voice right and God showed me a picture with one of my friends that she was eating the scrolls like going to the throne room and eating the scroll but they were stuck the mm. scroll was stuck and and God wanted them to be released and to be digested and then the voice come out and the prophetic voice is something that we all are like we're unsure we're like well what is that like should i am i is that right like and i have to tell you that one word someone gave me Mm -hmm. god gave me one word for someone it was pillow i'm like and she's like talking about all stuff and god says tell her and i'm like pillow did you say pillow yes and i'm like this is something i'm learning about prophetic right and so i'm like pillow and and god says yes tell her pillow mm-hmm. so i'm telling like a 56 year old woman or something like, i'm like uh oh, well, i feel god is saying pillow and she goes ah, like just like lose yeah. it yeah. and like you know and god showed that when she was a little girl mm. that her pillow was like her comfort and her dad would beat her. She'd go mm-hmm. in her room and she'd hold this pillow. I had no idea. So God gave me deeper revelation about the pillow. I had three other people that the pillow came up with <laughs> later. I had no idea. So trust God. I, I felt to throw that in there. Mm-hmm. Trust God that he uses the donkey to speak through us, right? And so if he says pillow, if he says fork, if he says, you know, yeah. Grass, like okay i gotta show you something based on that because and i it was on i have it here just in case because i'm like this is a word this was a word for my personal word for the year but yeah. i gotta show you because you're gonna die <laughs> hilarious so and i hang this big but okay ready yep oh no what Hello. <laughs> That's amazing. Tell me about it. What is okay. it? Well, and this is this this has more meaning to me as I go on with my year. Like it the Lord showed me this was a paint it's hard to do things backwards on these. No, no. Like, <laughs> so, you know, and here's another thing. When we were when you were praying for Arlene, I kept seeing this picture, Arlene, for you. Oh, you. Oh. And um okay. So this I painted for my year, 2020. And I heard the Lord say to me, rest in the promise. That was what he told me for 2020, right before it. And so I painted this right in January and I sold the original, but I this is a print that I put on my desk. And for me, it was, I didn't understand to see the season I'd walk into when I, when he told me this, and this is what I love about God is he gives us words to put in our spirits so that in times as we walk out this like life, that we go back to these words because there's so much transition right now and unknown. And even in the world, like for my own life, there's been, and it's just this season of like, what, what, what's going on? Like, I don't know where I'm landing right now, you know? But he told me you have to rest in the promise. So this is the promise. Whenever I see eggs and nests, I think of his promises. And and birthing something new, yeah. his, new his newness and his new promises for us are like, I see them as eggs. And his nest is his protection. And and then I saw feathers, which was his peace and the Holy Spirit just covering it. Wow. But I saw it on a pillow. 
Wow. That's because for me, it, he, he was just, I think he's been teaching me how to trust him more in the unknown. And for me, this is a picture when I think of rest in the promise, I think of trusting that he has a plan that I need to learn how to abide in it and rest in it and not get worried or not get, you know, uh, just anxious or when things don't look like you thought they would, mm. what do you do? You know? And so this word for me, uh, has been my word in this year. And, and I'll, I, I'm not, I'm not saying Arlene, it's exactly, but I saw this picture in my head as you were praying of a ne- this rest in the promise mm-hmm. that there's a promise that mm-hmm. God's word is um, faithful. Wow. That I, I just so, think that's amazing. And she said that other people have given her words of rest. So confirmation. Maybe. Yeah. My sister said, uh, when you're talking about the voice that is juiced, <laughs> what? that is juiced. <laughs> And and Donna, you were saying you needed prayer um, for the voice, right? You feel like you've lost your voice. Mm-hmm. So we lift you up, Donna, mm-hmm. that um, whatever has come against your voice and the strength that you carry and the authority that God has put on your life mm-hmm. as a mama, as a woman, that God will release your voice and so many lives will be touched. So many lives will be touched in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The other thing the Lord showed me really strongly this year, and I've been paying attention to it, is, you know, and I'm sorry, I just keep pulling out art because that's how he speaks to me. So, <laughs> right? So this was one of my other, this was a collector's club thing, but it was just these simple leads. And I woke up one morning and I heard out of waking, I heard, Uh, nature sings. And I was hearing a song being sung by leaves. Like, I know it sounds crazy, but like, if you imagine like the wind blowing in the leaves and it's singing. So I was hearing nature singing to Jesus. And I felt the Lord saying to pay attention to nature. And he kind of, he, he corrects me a lot in uh, when I conversate with him and pray. And he said that nature gets it more than we do. And I'm like, whoa, but it was like all of nature just worships the Lord. He gave us, you know, dominion over the land, but nature just will like they are in tune with him all the time. And for me, it was him showing me to pay attention because we need to learn how to go into that rhythm of worshiping him always. And being aware of his, him in everything, right? Like, so he was saying to me to pay attention because nature is worshiping all the time. And I'm like, whoa, and responding to him. They respond to the seasons, responds to the sun rising, you know, like I, I just thought it was beautiful, but it's just this, it's just a reminder for me to join in on nature's worshiping, nature's song. And it and in scripture it talks about all creation worships, but nature is groaning for the sons and daughters to arise. Wow! Yeah. Waiting for us to get it, uh-huh. right? Is that like nature's song? <laughs> what was that? A picture called nature's song. Yeah, Na- it's called nature sings. Oh, nature sings. Yeah. Yeah, but and I mean it's just a simple. But that's what he shows me. He shows me simple things. But then speaks a deeper meaning to it. And then he'll and I'll go into scripture and read these things. And it's just like, whoa, wow. Like it's so much, there's so much treasure in scripture when you spend time just reading, you know. But I I really he brought me to that scripture of how uh nature and like the earth is groaning and for the sons and daughters. I forget which one, which the revealing of the Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. And it's just like, it's like we're in this season of like the bride getting ready and the church needs to unite and wake up, you know, like we need to be prepared. 
Yes, it's coming. And he's, it's like he was showing me that trees are, they're waiting for us. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh, wow. We've got a lot to learn. <laughs> right? Because the rocks cry out too, I believe, uh -huh. right? There's sound, like the, the water, yeah. not like the, the wind. There's some the water in yeah. nature. But we yeah. don't worship the creation, we worship the creator, yeah. but he speaks through many things around us. And that's like he gives beauty to us. Yeah, like everywhere we go, there's so much beauty, like near Banff here, like it's oh. incredible. It's so awesome. So yeah, he's been really like, it's like take time to go on a walk. Yeah. Or That's all I gotta do. Just, <laughs> yeah, just sit outside and listen to birds and say, Lord, what are you saying to me today? Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, so maybe that's for somebody just to to take a moment and just sit in nature and just be quiet and that's just me. <laughs> hear him. <laughs> That's for me, Mindy. I never leave the house hardly. I step on the door, I'm like, whoa. So I got to go down to that creek down there and have a sit there. And then you'll hear him tell you all sorts of good stuff. Maybe I'll get a song and release my voice. And sing a new song, right? Yeah, yeah I love it. Yeah. Mindy, I it's been such a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thank you. It was so fun. This was and so good. Could you close in prayer for us? Sure. Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. Yeah, so, uh, Lord, we just uh, lift up this night, and uh, I, I lift up Stacy and I thank her for this opportunity and what you're doing through her and this ministry and the voice you're giving her through her podcast. And just it's just beautiful um, time to spend with other people and hearing stories about you and your testimonies of our life. And, Lord, I just ask that... Um, you touch everyone on this um, who's listening to this tonight, who may listen to it later, and just um, speak to them of the the deep personal things that you know and made them for, and uh, just show them who you are and who you've created them to be for for such a time as this right now. That we are in a time where our voices need to be. Uh, ignited with the fire of God and that people can see you through us and what we do and that we're not ashamed and we're not scared of, of any fear of man. So I break that off of anybody tonight in the name of Jesus. And I ask you give them uh, dreams, visions, impressions, and, and just speak to them clearly uh, in their day-to-day -day moments and, uh, show up in in fun and unique ways that you do and uh, i just bless everyone tonight in jesus name amen. amen amen god bless you guys it was fun sharing with you tonight and i'm doing tuesdays and thursdays now who knows it might be more nights because there's so many wonderful people <laughs> to share their story maybe we'll have mindy back on when she's done a project there and she can share it oh what's happening mindy's already being taken out so uh god bless you guys thanks for joining tonight Love you.